Hello and welcome dear friends at Lit E City, the YouTube channel which brings exciting material related with English literature that helps you, guides you in your preparation for exams like NTA NAT. Dear friends, in today's session we have bring, we have brought 25 advanced level question on John Milton. John Milton, one of the greatest writer of English literature. In his stature, he is equal to Shakespeare and in some uh, even some criteria he is even better or higher than Shakespeare. And at each year, each time. Uh, at least one or two questions are asked directly either from Milton's life, his works or on the critics. So in these questions, we have tried to cover all these topics. So here comes our first question. False rules pranked in reason's garb. It is a phrase taken from Milton's commerce and spoken by the protagonist lady. The phrase is actually an indictment, a criticism of, is it metaphysical amatory poetry, Elizabethan romantic drama, orthodox religious poetry, or pseudo-classical rules of poesy. In fact, Milton was taking a shot. Milton was criticizing the prevalent tendency of the poets of the time who used, who basically displayed false rules in reason's garb. The correct answer for this is, dear friend, it is metaphysical amatory poetry by writers like John Donne and Andrew Marvel, which Milton is criticizing. Second uh, question is, which of the following statements regarding Allegro is not correct? Is not correct. Allegro is one of the earlier poems of John Milton. The option, the statement are, it is a celebration of daytime pleasures, mostly undertaken in rural setting. The poem begins with the rejection of melancholy, the goddess of pensive mood. Among the list of pleasure giving things, the poet mentions plays of Ben Johnson and William Shakespeare, and the poem is written in Spenserian stanza form. So these are the four statements. Now you have to find the combination which are not correct. Is it second and third? Are they not correct? Only third one, only fourth one, or third or fourth one? The correct answer, dear friends, is the poem is not written in a Spenserian stanza form. Rather, it is written in couplets. So this is not correct uh, statement. Third question, which book of Paradise Lost opens with popularly known as the prologue to light and is addressed to the holy light of God and heaven? Dear friends, I would here recommend that you should read uh, at least uh, two or three good summaries of Paradise Lost, all books. Uh, we see a lot of questions coming from Paradise Lost, like this one, uh, the book which opens with the prologue to light. Is it book second, book third, book fourth, or book sixth? And the correct option, dear friend, is it is the book third which opens with the invocation to his goddess and which is known as, popularly known as, the prologue to light. Yet once more, O ye laurels, once more, ye myrtles brown, with ivy never sear, I come to pluck your berries harsh and crude. Thus opens one of Milton's popular poetic works and you have to identify the, the opening lines. These are the opening lines of which work? Is it Commas, which is a mask, Pensereso, which is a companion poem to Allegro, Lycidas, which is a pastoral elegy, or Samson, Agnostus, which is a closet play. And among these it is Lycidas, the pastoral elegy, written in memory of his friend Edward King, in which these lines opens the poem. Given below are some famous phrases from Milton's work. Which of these isn't a title for some later literary work? So many writers have taken phrases either from Paradise Lost or some other works and you have to identify which among these is not from Milton's. Uh, the options are darkness visible, second is look homeward angel, 
third is Ilas and Gaza and the last is east of Eden. Now out of uh, these four, one is that particular work which is not taken from Milton's poetry or a phrase from Milton and yes friends it is East of Eden by John Steinbeck which is not uh, taken from with the phrase is not of Milton. Below are two columns with some phrases and figures of his speeches. Find the correctly matched option. Now these all phrases are from Milton's poetry. For example, hungry man, our part, not uninvented that, and darkness visible. And the figures of his speech we have are syncope, litatus, oxymoron, and synesthesia. Now, if you know about these figures of his speech, Milton was a great uh, stylist. He used a lot of Latin and uh, Greek uh, uh, figures of his speeches. Some of these are displayed here and our <clears throat> options are uh, matched in this manner. And we can easily uh, point out, for example, hungry mouth so mouth and hungry it is that our part this is one of the easiest one you can see that there is one uh, syllable or letter missed which is basically syncope so second is a and so these two options are possible then once again darkness and visible which are two opposites put together so you can see it is c so fourth c it is only this option Yes, the correct option is B. Hungry mouth is an example of synesthesia. Then over part is an example of syncope. Not uninvented two negatives together is example of litatus and darkness visible example of synesthesia. Which of the following fallen angels proposes exploiting the wealth of hell rather than warring against God? Now it is from the first book of Paradise Lost in which a meeting is going on between Satan and the fallen angels and different angels give their uh, opinions regarding the uh, next step they must take. So who among these angels uh, suggest that we should take uh, this opportunity to exploit the wealth of hell. Uh, was it Beelzebub, uh, Belial, Moloch, or uh, Mammon? All of them are fallen angels and among these it is Mammon. Uh, the fallen angel with downcasted eyes always looking for gold in the in earth and he basically this proposes that we should exploit the wealth of hell. Satan frequently transforms himself into different shapes while he is visiting earth. Which of the following options show the correct order of Satan's transformation? Now we see that uh, in the first book and uh, in, in fact even in the second book he, he is presented in a very glorious manner. He is almost a knight and we have sympathy but in later books there is a continual uh, deterioration in his stature. So uh, cherub, cormorant, lion and toad, then cherub, lion, cormorant, toad, then lion, cherub, cormorant, toad, and once again lion, ch uh, cherub, okay, uh, the last option is actually repeated once again. Uh, but if we look at the correct uh, answer, it won't, it won't change and you can remember this by uh, looking at the order of species. Cherub obviously is a very high order, angelic order, cormorant is a flying uh, bird. So once again, uh, uh, an entity which lives in the sky. Then lion, though now on earth, but is still a very fierce beast. But in the end, a toad, which is almost des despicable. In Paradise Lost, who is the angel that guards the gate of Adam and captures Satan on his first attempt at corrupting Adam. Now God knows beforehand that Satan will try to seduce Adam and Eve and he has put uh, some angels to protect this particular Eden garden. But still Satan tries to uh, infiltrate Eden garden, trespass it and this angel captures him. Who is this angel? Is it Michael, Raphael, Gabriel or Abdiel? Now the correct answer is Gabriel is that angel who uh, 
who notices, who catches Satan lurking and trying to trespass the gate of Adel and uh, he stops him uh, in his attempt. Milton's early work and very famous one on Shakespeare. It is, you have to identify the type of this work, whether it is a eulogy epigram or is it a dedicatory sonnet or is it a dedicatory essay or a dedicatory ode. Dear friends, it is generally misunderstood to be a sonnet, but it is, this is not the case. It is actually a eulogy epigram. Match the two columns indicating books, essays of criticism on Milton and their respective writers. So lot of work has been done on Milton. So Milton first and Milton second, two different books published in different years by this great critic. A preface to Paradise Lost, once again a great work in which a psychological insight has been put into that uh, dealing with the fallen angels. Surprise by Sin is another path breaking book and uh, we can say bravura reading of Paradise Lost and Milton's God. And the options are, uh, you can, uh, I hope that among all these it is easy to identify Surprise by Sin which is written by Stanley Fish. So third D, uh, so in three options it is, okay at least one option is now over Milton's two studies, first and second, it is done by T.S. Eliot. Now, first C, we have now two options, B and D. And dear friends, it is actually um, first Mil uh, Milton's two studies by T.S. Eliot. Preface to Paradise Lost is by C.S. Lewis and Surprise by Sin by Stanley Fish and Milton's God by William Amson. That glory never shall his wrath or might extort from me. These lines by Satan showing his courage, showing his determination, showing his uh, indomitable will and the glory Satan is talking about. This refers to the courage never to yield, the audacity to challenge Almighty, to reign in hell and the ability to lead angels. So he is, we all know, actually talking about the courage never to yield even in such dire adverse situation. Satan is very much sure of himself. He says he won't surrender to God whatever happens. Which critic observing Satan's noble striving against adversity and his valorization or support of the individual commented, this bold neglect of direct moral purpose is the most decisive proof of the supremacy of Milton's genius. Now the whole romantic age basically uh, they were very much keen to look at Milton's sympathetic treatment of Satan, his glorification of individuality or we can say uh, the right to revolt and something like this. So whose words are these? These are some great romantic critics, Coleridge, Blake, Lamb and Shelley. All these have put their comment, their reading of Paradise Lost and these uh, words are actually by Shelley who himself was a great champion of individuality and freedom. As Adam and Eve leave paradise hand in hand with wandering steps and slow, what is their consolation? What is that thing which consoles them? Is it they are comforted by their love for one another? They are comforted by the presence of a guiding angel? They are comforted by the knowledge of the coming of Christ as Redeemer? Or it is both A and C. Dear friends, it is basically their knowledge that yes, um, they, the Christ will come who will redeem the humanity of it, their sin, the original sin, which makes them uh, uh, feel at least consoled that uh, a day will come when the humanity will be redeemed. Areopagitica, it is a very famous work, a prose work by Milton, a staunch plea against the censorship of free speech and press. But among all types of books, Milton supports the censorship of books that espouse, that support, that advances 
monarchy, Catholicism, women cause or atheism. We all know that Milton wants that there should be free press or there should be right to every man to present his or her opinions. But still he was not in favor of such books which promotes it is Catholicism. He has burnt his hand. He has faced all kind of adversities, tortures from the Catholics. So he knows that uh, he can't uh, put Catholics also in the same category as other people. The angel who is sent to Adam to remind Adam and Eve that they have free will and set an intent to tempt them to evil. So basically, once again, God shows his um, full knowledge of the events and uh, he knows that Satan will come and seduce Adam and Eve but still he forewarns them that this can happen and the angel who brings this news this warning is Gabriel, Ariel, Raphael or Zephron. So among these it is Raphael who in a very magnanimous manner tries to warn both Adam and Eve of the coming calamity. Milton opened Paradise Lost in Media Res and later uses Raphael's story to relate the events that led up to the opening of book first. In which book or books Raphael tells the back story, the rebel of uh, angels, uh, the coming of war and how they were all uh, discharged into hell. Is it book third, fifth, fifth and sixth or sixth? Dear friend, it is in two books, book 5th and 6th, that uh, Raphael, to, uh, tell, told, uh, Raphael tells this story to Adam, who is very curious to know what happened. Who is the only contemporary to be mentioned by name in Paradise Lost? This question has been asked to in various exams so many times. That is why I have included this also. Is it Oliver Cromwell or Charles II or Francis Bacon or Galileo? Dear friends, among all these, it is the mention of Galileo with his telescope watching the stars and through which he compares them compares it to Satan using in a Homeric simile. It is only mention of him that finds place in Paradise Lost. Which of the following arguments is not used by Satan in order to seduce Eve to eat the forbidden fruit? The Satan uses many arguments to try to seduce Eve, to try to convince Eve to eat the fruit. So the fruit hasn't killed him, so it's not mortal or fatal. God envies Adam and Eve, so he forbids them to eat the fruit. Eve would get knowledge equating her to God. The fruit will make her attractive, so Adam will always love her. Dear friends, it is the last argument. He doesn't mention love or something related with Adam, but all about knowledge, about ability to speak or having uh, this kind of the, these things with which he seduces Eve and convinces her to eat the forbidden fruit. God, the son, passes some punishments on the culprits of the fall, which among these are uh, his judgments after they have eaten the forbidden fruit and have made uh, sexual love. The snake will now crawl on its belly rather than go upright. It is for Satan. Eve and all women will be given the pain of childbirth. Man, because of Adam, will have to labor in the ground to make their food. One of the children of Adam and Eve will commit the first crime. Now, out of these uh, um, different options, it is basically first, second and third which he passes the last one that one of the children of Adam and Eve yes it happens but it is not one of the punishment given by the son of God who is the only rebel angel that opposed Satan and remained loyal to God forcing Satan to order him to live though he is a fallen angel but when Satan proposes to continue war with God he opposes Satan and Satan in disgust and anger dispels him from his uh, abode. Is it Abdiel, Osiris, Astarte or Camos? Dear friends, the correct answer is Abdiel, who is basically once he is actually fallen angel, but later he is redeemed by God. 
Milton wrote some tracts espousing radical arguments for divorce, uh, basically inspired by his own life, an argument informed by the concepts of personal liberty and individual volition. Which of the following is not one of the divorce tracts? Is it the judgment of Martin Busser, Remonstrants, Tetracordon, or Cholesterium? Dear friends, among all these, it is reminiscence. It is actually a tract, but it is not about uh, marriage, but rather about education. Rest of three are uh, tracts related with marriage and divorce. Wordsworth thought that Milton used this particular form as a trumpet, whence he blew soul animating strains. So he is talking about Milton's epic, Milton's elegy, Milton's sonnets or Milton's prose pamphlets. Dear friends, according to Wordsworth, it is basically Milton's elegies, oh sorry, Milton's sonnet which, which worked like a trumpet because most of the sonnets by Milton are political and they are on the issues like personal liberty, freedom of speech and other such democratic things. Which of the following is not a punishment given by God to Adam and Eve as a result of their eating the forbidden fruit? First, children, thou shalt bring in sorrow forth, expulsion from Eden. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, thou in sorrow shall eat thereof all days of thy life. Dust shall eat all the days of thy life. So actually first three are given by God. It is the last one which is not uh, given as a punishment. And the last question for the session, dear friend, is for which works, uh, his own works, Milton used the expression, I have the use of but of my left hand. Whether it is about his prose works, his sonnets, his Latin elegies or mass. Dear friends, though he has written a lot of prose works, but he said that that is not exactly his poetic output. They are, uh, in fact, the result of his left hand. With this, dear friends, we come to the end of this exciting session of questions on John Milton. Keep supporting us. Keep watching the channel where we will bring some more important sessions of uh, questions and information. Thank you, dear friends.